What's good, y'all? It's Will Ross back at it again with another video. So we got to talk about what happened on this episode of SmackDown. Some interesting things happened. Uh, we're going to get right into the thick of things. I'm just going to talk about the most important stuff for me, in my opinion, that happened on this show. Started off the show with Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman pretty much uh, letting everybody know that uh, Roman Reigns and LA Knight will be having their match at Crown Jewel, which people had speculated since last week. They were setting up the story for that. So it's good. It's pretty much official. They got to do the contract signing next week. And, you know, Paul Heyman's good at bigging up the, uh, you know, Roman's opponent, opponent, but he's also there to make sure uh, he bigs up Roman and pretty much saying how, you know, Roman's going to pretty much dominate, smash and destroy LA Knight. LA Knight comes out there to a huge reaction and Paul's trying to scurry out of the ring, but he pretty much said, no, nah, Paul, get your fat ass back in this ring. We, I got something to say to you since Roman's not here. I can only address it to you. And he basically pretty much was owning Paul. He, he made, he was making Paul Heyman his bitch in his promo segment. I definitely enjoyed it. He's talking about how his, uh, his rise, to you know to to fame where he is now how quick it is and how quick it's gonna be for him to you know take that championship for roman reigns and how roman reigns if you're gonna send shots make sure you finish the job because if you leave me with any you know any leave me standing or leave me with the opportunity to stand back up best believe i'm gonna finish the job so i like what um what he was talking about it definitely does hype me up to see they're back and forth next week. That's what really this contract sign is going to be. Just their back and forth. I'm looking forward to that. But he basically let Paul Heyman know, hey, I'm coming for you, boy. I'm going to take him out because he had a chance to finish me off, but he couldn't get the job done. He didn't do it. And I love how he shoved the microphone back in Paul Heyman's chest. And Paul Heyman was like, oh, 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 man. So we cut to a backstage segment. Where you have Solo, Paul Heyman in the in the room, and then Jimmy comes out there. Jimmy uh comes into the room and he's talking about what he did to Jay and Cody and how he got the job done using that quarterback reference, you know, that they've been using the past couple weeks with him and Roman making plays or whatever. And they're watching the TV, and then you see John Cena on the TV. So he arrives to the arena. Yeah, I guess he had a, he had an announcement comes out there gets a great ovation crowd loves john cena it's crazy to say that now in 2023 uh, no matter where john cena goes he gets nothing but babyface reaction and i think that's because people have grown to appreciate what john cena has been for wwe and this was a very interesting promo and i like how he did this he had a like a some sort of like quiver in his voice like something that he had to really get off his chest and he started off with saying i i have to say this i have to get this off my chest i have to talk to you guys about something serious and he had this quiver in his voice it seemed like he was trying to hold back tears he was really performing he was selling this this was john cena in his acting bag it seemed like he was really trying to convey these serious thoughts and messages that he wanted to tell us and he was basically like you know he was talking about the epic reign that roman reigns is on with his title reign over a thousand plus days right and then he said there's a fun fact statistical stat of my own that i just recently found out and he said 2002 days it's been 2002 days since I've won a televised match. And I was like, wait, what? Is that really true? He said his last win was in 2018. That is crazy to really think about that. He has not won a match on television since 2018. That's crazy when you think about it. Granny, he's been gone for a lot of that, but that's still that's that's a lot of people he there's a few people he can put over. He has not won since then. And he started to pose the question of maybe it's time for me to retire. And he was really selling this. He was selling this like maybe it's my time to retire. Fans chant, no, 
no, it's not your time. No, they, they even showed a never give up sign. You know, that's John Cena, never give up. And then, of course, good old John, he, he says, you know what? I'm not giving up. I'm not going to quit. Man, I'm ready to go. I'm going to get me a win. So you know what? Whoever wants to come out there next, they about to get smoked. Man, took off the shirt. <laughs> he had the hair greased up. He was ready to go. He's like, whoever come out next, they catching the smoke. Solo music hit. I was like, oh, it's oh. And you know, Solo and John Cena, they've been having a nice back and forth. And Solo has been booked as someone very credible this was gonna be very interesting and they start brawling there's no referee out there and there's no match officially made they start brawling and then of course jimmy comes out there and uh super kicks uh cena and they start having they start jumping him then you see a hooded figure he has on an all black fit but he had like a hood on, so you couldn't really see who it was. He comes in, he pulls out Jimmy, and obviously we knew it, it had to be Jay. But he starts attacking him. He takes the hood off, and the crowd go crazy. They see Jay. Jay is attacking Jimmy. You got security trying to stop, uh, stop Jay because he's not supposed to be on the show, obviously. And he's just throwing him around ringside to the commentary, to the ring, to the barricade area. Super kicks him over there. And he, you know, he's trying to get his hands on Jimmy. And it's so funny because you cut the Jimmy in the timekeeper's area over here talking about timeout, timeout. There ain't no timeout, bro. No time out here, bro. You about to catch the beats from your brother because you deserve it. So, obviously, they they escort Jay to the back, all the security personnel, and, you know, people were checking up on Jimmy in the timekeeper's area. But with that distraction, Solo Solo still is trying to, you know, hit um, John Cena with the Samoan Spike. But John Cena is able to reverse it into an AA he hits the AA and uh, Solo scurries out the ring while Jimmy uh, scurries out as well. So after that crazy segment, crowd was electric for that. So we cut to the back where um, you got security and you got Nick Aldis, the new GM of SmackDown, and you got Jay there in like his office area. And basically, Nick Aldis lets Jay know that you can't be attacking SmackDown stars. Stars, you're not on the show. You can't be doing that. So I'm gonna find you ten thousand dollars. That's when Adam Pierce comes into the mix, into the shot, and he's like, "Hey, what's going on here?" Like. I get that, you know, what he did, but if you're going to do, if you're going to find him 10000 you need to find his brother 10000 as well because Jimmy did come on to Monday Night Raw and attack pretty much, uh, he, you know, attack and cost uh, Jay and um, Cody Rhodes their title, uh, you know, their tag team championship match. You know, he attacked them and cost them the match. So he needs to be fined as well, but Nick Aldis wasn't trying to hear it. So he's like, you know what? A security escort Jay from the premises. Then Adam Pierce is like, "Yo, you ain't gotta even do all that. I'll escort him off the premises." Then Nick Aldis was like, "You know what? Better yet, security escort both of them, Jay and Adam Pierce, off the premises." Well, Adam Pierce calmly took the glasses off. This is what we doing. Okay, but that's fine. I'm Willie. Let the games begin. And just that line right there, I'm like, oh, yes. It seems like we may have some brand warfare once again, Raw versus SmackDown, potentially at War Games. There's no reason why you would say, let the games begin if you're not talking about War Games. And crowd, you can hear the crowd get excited about that. I am looking forward to seeing what they do here. And it may involve jimmy and jay which i'm all for if there's a situation of team jimmy versus team jay at war games that could be interesting too i like what they're doing here i definitely like what they're doing here overall i enjoyed this segment this definitely felt like a main event segment this was fantastic i love the story and the implications they have 
potentially going on here and what could possibly happen. Also, I got to talk about Logan Paul and Rey Mysterio interaction. Logan Paul comes back to the show and he's just made to be a heel. He's fantastic as a heel. The people want to boo him because people just don't want to like Logan Paul. And he's made for this. Uh, he was talking about uh, his boxing match or what it, if you want to call it boxing against uh, Dylan Dennis. He's talking about getting him, you know, packing him up. And now he's like, you know, I've already taken care of of Rey Mysterio, but there's one thing I don't have, and that's that United States Championship. So Rey Mysterio comes out there with the the Batman Rey mask. It looked like a, a Batman mask. Rey's out there for vengeance. So he comes out there, and he was like, you know what? You remind me of my son or whatever. The difference between you and my son is I really didn't want to have to, you know, <laughs> beat up my son and, 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 you know, put hands on my son. I didn't want to do that. But with you, I'm going to enjoy beating your ass. <laughs> so they they made it official. They shook hands or whatnot, and it's official. We got Rey Mysterio versus Logan Paul, crown jewel for the United States Championship. Now, here is the thing. I know there's some people that are <laughs> actually saying, you know what? Put it on, uh, put the title on, on, uh, on Logan. Here's the thing. The only way I would be okay with that is if Ricochet was able to actually win it. Obviously, Ricochet is not on uh, SmackDown. So they can find a way to, you know, have that match set up. But I do think we need another Ricochet-Logan Paul match because the last match ended with Logan Paul cheating. So they got to find a way to finish it. So the only way I would be okay with it is if they continue the story with Ricochet and Ricochet was ultimately ultimately able to get his win back from Logan and takes the title from him. Or if you don't have him lose to Logan, which I'm okay with, if you have Ray retain, have it be a situation where Logan's about to cheat, but then, then Ricochet comes out there and caught stops him from cheating. You know what I'm saying? Maybe uh, you know, Logan's about to pull out the brass knucks like he did before. He's going to pull out the brass knucks, and that's when Ricochet stops him, and maybe he hits him with the brass knucks or whatever to get his one-up revenge, and then Ray ends up getting the pin victory that way. You can do something like that. There's a situation when the ref's down, and you can have all these shenanigans happen, but you have Ray retain, and then you can set up a feud with Ricochet and Logan one more again because obviously they have unfinished business. So those are two ways you possibly could do it. But either way, I do think the match is going to be fucking great because Logan Paul has not <laughs> has not failed when it comes to being able to deliver a pretty good match with every opponent he's had. And it's Rey Mysterio. It's hard to fuck up a Rey Mysterio match. So I think they will be just fine. And it could be match of the night potentially but we'll see but i'm looking forward to how crown jewel is so far shaping up so comment down below let me know did you guys enjoy the show what was your favorite part of the show what are you what matches are you looking forward to the most me personally even though i know how it's probably gonna end we know uh roman is most likely still going to beat uh um la night i am interested to see how that match is going to be in the story they're going to tell. And I'm interested to see their promo segment with the contracts on it they're going to have next week. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys shown on channel. Road to 150K and I'm still in the speed of YouTube wrestling champion of the world. Appreciate y'all keeping me. See y'all next one. Peace.